Hello, this is BioDiagme from Pass Icon Online. One area of the syllabus which has featured prominently in the past public sector accounting and finance exam, and we know it will continue to feature prominently in future exam, is the reporting of financial statements. This is essentially reporting using IPSAS. This area of the syllabus is very important and very practical. And your understanding of it is not only useful to pass an ICANN exam, but it is also useful in your professional practices after you are qualified. As part of the revision, Pass ICANN Online will be sharing a series of revision videos on public sector accounting and finance, and this video is on IPSAS. In this video, we will be reviewing IPSAS and the conceptual framework surrounding it. At the end of this video, you will have revised what IPSAS is, why is there argument to adopt IPSAS, who should adopt IPSAS, and how is IPSAS developed and changed. And to review this developing and changing IPSAS, we will review the conceptual framework that surrounds IPSAS. So let us start by reviewing what is IPSAS? IPSAS are international public accounting standard issued by the IPSAS board and developed by International Federation of Accountants for the use of public sector entities around the world in preparation of general purpose financial statements except for government business enterprises. Now, the simple definition I've given about IPSAS mentioned two key important matters that relates to IPSAS. One of them is the general purpose financial statements and the second one is the government business enterprises. I think for us to go ahead, it's important we also review what these two are. Let's start with the general purpose financial statements. General purpose financial statements, as the name shows, means that it is a financial statement that is prepared for general purpose. It also presupposes that there should be somewhere a special purpose financial statement. Now, what is the difference? The difference is that a general purpose financial statement is issued to all users irrespective of their needs, while the special purpose financial statement usually is issued to a particular person who work for a particular purpose. For example, if a country is seeking loan from another country, it may request that it prepares a particular type of statement in a particular format to meet the need of that entity that is requesting for the financial statement. If not, all financial statements prepared should be a general purpose financial statement. So general purpose financial statements are those types of financial statements released for broad groups of users who are not in position to demand for tailor-made reports. Now, what constitutes a set of a general purpose financial statement? One. For you to have a set of a general purpose financial statement, you have a statement of financial position, two statements of financial performance, three statements of changes in assets, four cash flow statements, five if the country has put it in the public its budget, a statement of comparison of budget figure and, and the actual, actual figure for the year. And last but not the least, a, the list notes to the accounts, notes to the accounts, where we have issues, for example, accounting policies adopted by the country or the agency or the entity issuing the financial statement. 
Now, what is a government business enterprise? A government business enterprise are public sector agencies that are no different from entity conducting similar business. The key word here is similar. Similar activities or business in private sector. This definition may seem wide and sometimes can be confusing. So IPSAS has also gone further to give us characteristics which an entity must have before it could be qualified as a government business entity. Now, why is it do we need to properly get this right? Because any government entity that falls under the classification of government business entity will only report using IFRS, would not report using the IPSAS. And the key word here is that the entity must have all of the characteristics before it could be classified as a government business entity. Number one is that it must be controlled by public sector. Number two is that it must have power to contract in its own name, power to contract, to go into contract, to go into business in its own name. Three, it must have the has been assigned financial and operational authority to carry on the business. It must have a financial and operational to carry on the business. Four, it must sell goods and services in the normal course of, the, of its business to other entities at a profit or full cost recovery basis. Sell goods and or services to other entities at either profits or full cost recovery. And last but not the least is the issue of its going concern. And IPSAS states that its going concern must not rely on continued funding of government. Therefore, it does not need government funding to continue to grow. The next question is why do we need IPSAS? You will recall that accounting generally has basic objective of providing useful information that will enable users to make decisions. But to produce this information, accountants have so many principles, assumptions, constraints to rely on. So, therefore, there is so much judgment in what accountants would determine that, oh, this is what I feel is right in this kind of um, situation or this area, which may not necessarily follow what another accountant may judge as being right or truth or fair. And because of that, it does not allow comparability amongst various entities easily. Therefore, there was lack of uniformity. But as globalization came, globalization came and there is cross-border investment and review and all that. There's a need for us to have, to have uniform financial statements. And this gave birth to the international standard, amongst which is the IPSAS, so that there will be comparability between one country and the other, one entity performing similar activity in one country to the other, for example, it would not be easy for us to compare Nigeria with Ghana because we are preparing financial statements using the international standard. The next question then, we have agreed that IPSAS is good. We've also agreed on the issues concerning what IPSAS is, who should pay it. The next question is how do we not develop it? How do we develop the IPSAS? Now, IPSAS is generally developed around the basic conceptual framework of accounting. Of accounting. Now, the conceptual framework of accounting starts with defining the objective of financial statements. Objective of financial statements. You may note that the objective of financial statements in private sector is different. Usually, the objective of paying financial statements in the private sector may be to prepare a financial statement 
that can help investment decisions. But the objective of financial statements in public sector is basically for two reasons. One, to show accountability, and two, to aid decision making. Now, accountability, you must note that in public sector, why private sector gets their funding basically from equity rates from various areas and, and from owners of the business or from loans from creditors. Public sector funding basically comes from taxing, fines, and generally money sourced that has a direct effect on the citizens of that country. Therefore, it's important that we are able to review the financial statement to see how the government is utilizing their funding. And this will also help in decision making on what to do and how to plan going forward. And to aid this objective, the conceptual framework also went to give what we call fundamental characteristics of a financial state. Fundamental characteristics of a financial state. Which are one, relevance and faithful representation. The relevance is saying that information contained in a financial statement must not exclude any information that is capable of altering the view of any of the user. Therefore, the information must have all information. And that's why even in Facebook Facebook edition, we say that Facebook edition is basically saying that financial information must be one, complete, two, must be neutral, and must be three free from error as much as possible. Now, why these two are the fundamental characteristics of financial statements under IPSAS? There are other characteristics that also enhances these two basic fundamental characteristics. They are one, comparability. Financial statements should be comparable. Year in, year out, we should not change without giving notes or reason why changes are being done. Financial statements should include information that are verifiable. Three, it must be timely. We know that a financial statement of 2005, though it's a financial statement, may not be relevant in 2015 because of the time. And four, it must be understandable. This also, I now also base on characteristics of materiality and cost benefits. So essentially, for IPSAS to be developed or changed, these are the consideration that was given to it by the IPSAS board through IFAC for it to be able to develop a financial statement. So I hope you found this video informative. In this video, to explain what IPSAS is, why IPSAS is being adopted, talking of the argument for IPSAS, who should adopt IPSAS, and by that to explain the issues concerning the government business enterprises. And we also now went through the conceptual framework of how IPSAS is developed or could be changed. This is a revision video from past ICANN online. You can subscribe to our channel by pressing the subscribe button on, on our YouTube channel. You can visit our website at www.passiconline.com and you can also tweet at us at passiconline or like our Facebook page, Facebook slash passiconline. Thank you very much. Look out for other videos on our revision series as we go along.